looking good. Well, it is one o'clock in the afternoon on Monday and got another call of a stranded Jeeper up on Rubicon, the bottom of Cadillac Hill with a blown rear drive line and a 392. So we are loaded up in our 392 with a spare stock rear drive line on our way to the Rubicon for our Monday afternoon. So we're gonna buzz up, haul ass in there, and uh, hopefully get home before dark. We'll see how this goes. Well, it's not looking good. I didn't even think about it. It's 70 degrees down here. And uh, looking out in front of me does not look promising. Look at that. That looks like uh, black rain clouds out in front of me. So the thing we got the bikini top on and the uh, soft upper windows. We'll see how that works out. A few moments later. Well, people, I think uh, we're learning a valuable lesson here. The rescuer only had one jacket in the car. The top is still not on the jeep, just the bikini top. Um, it's 36 degrees out and it has started snowing. It's just the beginning of this rescue, so I have a funny feeling I'm gonna be freezing by the time I'm done with this thing. Whatever you do, do not do this at home. Oh boy, here we are, snowstorm. Well, it was snowing a minute ago, and here we are, right at the lake. You can see snow flurries out on the water, um, but it's kind of sunny right now for a second, so I'm, I'm sure that will change as soon as we get in on the trail, but uh, once again, not a bad way to spend your Monday. It's 2.29, and we are right on the edge of Lake Tahoe, just about to the trailhead. We've been going through snow flurries, and it kind of just got sunny again. So we're gonna go air down right up here and uh, haul ass in and get out of here before the snow hits. Beginning of the Rubicon in Tahoma, Tahoe. Coming in the back way to go get them. Here we are at the staging area. There's one other truck back there and that's their truck and trailer. So I'm airing down the 392 right now. Uh, it's about 2.30 I think and I'm gonna try and get to them by three, maybe 3.15, bottom of Cadillac. See what happens, gonna make a little rip in. instead of 10 because um, I was going so fast I didn't want to be hitting the rim and pinching the tire but uh, now it's definitely a little rougher having it at 15 I should have gone down a little more but no big deal we'll make good time you just got to kind of continue your momentum like a dirt bike so I'm in second gear high range uh, 15 pounds you can carry speed hit the edges of the rocks, kind of blurp the throttle when you need to. Um, as long as you keep that front end light as you're coming into the walls of the rocks, the thing just really reacts well in this, you know, like eight to 10 inch boulder chop. You know, I mean, shit, I think I'm going 25 miles an hour. Oh, got a little bit there. 
shakes you a little bit. Doesn't help my phones on that camera mount kind of bounces. But we're moving. Good times. It's 319 and we are at the top of Cadillac Hill. Just about to the overlook and hopefully you get to them by about 3.30, 3.45. They're all the way at the bottom of Cadillac. But the weather's holding out. Haven't had any more snow or rain. Been dry, so hopefully we can get in, strike, and get out before I get soaked in my shorts uh, you know, on this fall day. So there it is. Oh, there's the overlook. You can see the weather's ominous, but we're gonna go ahead and Go down Cadillac and get them. Just in the trees here, going down Cadillac. More snow falling on the window, just light, no big deal. Kind of like sleet coming around the trees. We're still in high range, trying to make some pretty good time down the hill. Everything's going good. So, gonna make the turn here on the corner and get down to B Rocks or Arnold's Rock. Well, we got down and look at these guys made it all the way up past Morris Rock. You were home free, man. <laughs> we were. Yeah. <laughs> we figured, were tired though. Figured we might as well put the drive line in anyway. So he's down there. My shoulders did not work anymore. That's for sure. You want me to get in there and do it for you? Yeah, let me get down there. Hold on. I'm going to get down there and help out. Well, worst case scenario, we'll tow it out. Well, this is the view, and the drive line's back in. In there, a little damage on that disc head, and ready to party. No problem. Just like that, winding up the carpet, huh? I just ripped that right from the front of the showroom. <laughs> <laughs> Real quick side note, people were commenting on the internet, uh, on, the, on the Facebook page that he's got a 392, he's got too much horsepower, he must have been bound up and gassed it. That's not the case. They were crawling very slow. A rock flipped up as they were going over it, jammed between the full belly skid plates and the rock poked directly on the drive shaft. He gave it throttle while it was bending the drive shaft up and it's, it compromised the shape of the drive shaft, flopped around, twisted. So there's also something very important in this video for all you 392 owners who still have the all wheel drive 392 transfer case in your Jeep. So this happens to be a 392 transfer case that is out of the vehicle because we put an Atlas in a 392. And we don't often do that, but this recovery on the Rubicon has brought something to our attention that we've known for a long time, um, but it's definitely proof of concept and has proved to us that there is a problem that we need to think about if we're a 392 owner. So this is the 392 transfer case. It looks a lot different than a regular JL transfer case. And one of the things you'll see is this electric stepper motor right here on the back of the transfer case that goes to this section of the transfer case, which controls the front drive unit. So what's going on in here is the vehicle being all wheel drive, there has to be some slip between the front and rear uh, when you're driving down the road. Well, that comes in the form of an electronic uh, or a magnetic clutch inside this transfer case that is tightened and loosened by this electronic servo that engages the front drive shaft. So when we're talking about this clutch, it, it's like the, the age old question, how does posi traction work? Nobody knows, right? It just does. Is this clutch electric? Is it magnetic? Who knows? I haven't taken it apart. But the fact of the matter is, it does not have gear engagement. One of these days we'll take it apart and actually show you guys. Well, due to this, there is not a full, uh, you know, latch in gear style engagement for the front output. So we've heard that people have been burning up this clutch inside the transfer case and losing front wheel drive, uh, just wheeling and driving around. Um, we hadn't really seen one here at the shop that had a failure of the transfer case, but this Jeep on the trail really proved the point of these people. Um, so what happened is they broke the rear drive shaft. They unbolted the drive shaft here, they unbolted it off the rear end, two pieces in hand, threw it in the back of the JL. Uh, any regular four-wheeler would think, leave it locked into four low, 
um, lock the front locker so you have both front tires spinning, start driving. Every time you come to a ledge you can't get up, pull the winch, winch it up the ledge while you're giving it throttle with the front tires. So that's what these guys did. They spent a whole day going 50, 100 feet at a time, um, pulling winch cable. And when I ran into them, here we are, they're almost at the top of Cadillac. They're past the hard part where technically with a little bump, they could have made it out in front wheel drive. But what we were experiencing when we pulled the Jeep forward and back is even though they were in four low, and even though the locker was locked, when they put it in drive, they would gas it and the engine would rev up. It would seem like the transmission is slipping. The transmission was not slipping. What happened is the clutch inside here could not handle the full torque of a loaded down heavy JL with a lot of traction in front wheel drive only. So that viscous clutch, because it can't lock itself, or it's not a viscous clutch, the electric clutch, um, was starting to slip. And the more it slips and the more it slips, the more it slips, the more it wears out. So when I got to them, the front end was only starting to get the vehicle to move. It might work on flat ground, on pavement, on dirt roads, but every time they came up to a ledge or had to back up against something, it would slip. Now they took it very easy. They never kept the gas on, they never slipped it, they just kept on winching. So how much damage they did inside there, we don't know. But we do know that if you own a 392 and something happens to your rear end or your rear drive shaft, you need to replace it or get it fixed without keeping on driving or if you're driving on the trail you need to be strapped up to somebody and you definitely do not want to feel it slipping that clutch as it makes heat it wears stuff out and ruins it so any other jeep a standard transfer case your front wheel your front end will be fully engaged um you know the only way it would slip is if you broke a gear or an axle shaft in the 392 not the case so in this case we put the stock drive line back in so most of the torque is going to the rear drive line, which is fully engaged. Um, started wheeling again. We had quite a few hard spots the rest of the way out of the trail. And four low and the four wheel drive worked absolutely like it's supposed to. The Jeep didn't wheel any differently, uh, with the exception that they did go a couple miles in front only. And the factory 392 CVs were starting to pop a little bit when you turn super sharp in the parking lot. So it did overstress those front. But back to the transfer case scenario, we really don't know if they actually did damage when it was slipping because the Jeep did work perfectly on the way out. Well, I couldn't do much video fixing it because I was the one that ended up getting underneath there and getting the drive line in. But we are headed out and they're behind us. Rolling up Cadillac Hill, I think it was about a 30 minute fix. So it's four o'clock, everything's fixed and uh, heading back up Cadillac. Hopefully get out to the trailhead around five. Not a bad way to spend your Monday. I could think of worse places to be. Look at that. He's That's a body guy. fold out tailgate on the JL. That is awesome, 392. Oh, that is awesome. So rad. So we cut in the trim panels and everything to fit the new hardware. I mean, it looks like it was built that way. It does absolutely part. look like it was supposed to be on here. That's the metal belt one. Huh? Yeah, that's officially the first maybe snow of the season up here. More like sn There they are on the backup camera. We're up. On our way out, starting to get a little bit even on the on the trail. A little bit of a winter wonderland up here. Winter has wintered. We are out 553, aired up. They're loaded on the trailer, and it is time to go home. Another successful rescue on the Rubicon Trail. Winner's here, guys!